Okay. Now let's talk about the interosseous membrane. So of notice is that the interosseous membrane is basically connecting the shafts of radius and ulna and is attached to the interosseous borders of both of these bones. The interosseous border of radius is its medial border while the interosseous border of the ulna is its lateral border. Interosseous membrane basically starts 2 cm below the radial tuberosity. If you guys remember there was a radial tuberosity on the medial side of the radius. So about 2 cm below this the interosseous membrane begins and it runs from the radius to the ulna and the fibers run in the and the fibers run in the direction downwards and medially so interosseous membrane fibers run downwards and medially from the radius to the ulna another ligament between these two bones is the oblique cord the oblique cord is basically running from the radial tuberosity to ulnar tuberosity so the oblique cord is running from the radial tuberosity to the ulnar tuberosity so this is the oblique cord as you can see the direction of the oblique cord is completely opposite to the direction of the interosseous membrane fibers this is downwards and medially while this is upward and laterally so if you can see a gap is being formed between the oblique cord and the interosseous membrane this gap is being formed for a very important structure to be passed through it and also another aperture is being formed in the lower part of the interosseous membrane just at the upper border of the pronator quadratus muscle so what are these two uh, foramens for the gap in the upper part of interosseous membrane is to allow the passage of posterior interosseous vessels whereas in the lower part of the interosseous membrane an aperture is formed for the passage of anterior interosseous vessels so in both places there is passage being allowed for the vessels so remember it's not any nerve because it's easy to confuse uh, between the interosseous vessels and nerve so always remember through the gaps of the interosseous membrane the vessels pass in the upper part pass the posterior interosseous vessels while in the lower part pass the anterior interosseous vessels this is of note moving on so what's the point of the interosseous membrane the major point, the major function of the interosseous membrane is to connect the radius to the ulna to form the middle in uh, radio ulnar joint. Apart from this, the second function is so that it provides an extra surface for the uh, attachment of muscles because just this much surface is not enough. There has to be more surface for to provide attachment to the muscles of your forearm. And finally, it basically, since there is a wrist joint right here, which is formed between the radius and the carpal bones, the force that comes from your hand goes directly to the radius this membrane allows this force to be transmitted to the ulna so that's the third function of your uh, interosseous membrane now we'll talk about the movements supination and pronation so the supination and pronation are movements that happen uh, in your forearm and these are occurring on the radio ulnar joint as you know these are the pronation and supination during pronation your radius bone basically comes in front of your ulna bone so ulna goes in the back so suppose this is the ulna when you do pronation the radius lower part of the radius comes right in front of the ulna first we need to know what is the axis of these movements so if this is the head of radius and this is a styloid process and this is your ulna it runs down and this is the lower part of ulna the axis of supination pronation movement is a vertical axis which extends from center of head of radius above to the through the ulnar attachment of the articular disc below and as you all know the articular disc that was the inferior radio ulnar joints ligament it was basically attached to close to the styloid process of the ulna so at this ulnar attachment of the articular disc and above is the center of the head of the radius so this is the axis being formed which is the axis of supination and pronation now let's talk about the muscles involved in the various movements of note is that supination is a more powerful movement than the pronation because it is an anti-gravity movement so the pronation is carried out by the pronator quadratus and the most important muscle for pronation is the pronator quadratus 
and a muscle that is assisting the pronation is the pronator teres muscle. So remember pronator quadratus is your main pronator of the forearm. Apart from this we have the supination. Now this is a more powerful movement so this requires a very strong muscle. So always remember the chief supinator is the biceps brachii especially when the supination is occurring when the elbow joint is flexed. On the other hand when the elbow joint is extended and when only slow supination is required in that case supinator is the muscle carrying out the supination. So these were the two movements and the muscles involved in moving both. That was all about this radio ulnar joints. Thank you so much for watching.